What is going on folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here. Uh, I am now in my studio. It's obviously not complete. As you can see, I don't have a door on the studio yet. So I'm not fully done, but I've got stuff enough, hopefully set up that things will work. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments on sound and things like that. I'm, I'm testing stuff out to see mic placement and, and where to put things and camera placement, that too. Right, I, I don't know, it feels like I, I feel smaller because I felt like the camera was more lower, but now you can get the background and ignore the junk and the boards and stuff. That'll all get fixed. Anyway, what I'm here to talk to you about is the D&D Studio released a blog on the 21st. So probably by the time you're watching that, that's two days ago. And one, it's cool to see, and I'm wondering why now, almost six years into the life of this product, we're getting a blog to tell us what it is that they do there, which is fine, you know, better late than never, let us know now. Maybe it's because of the change in leadership or, or things. But most importantly for us as news, uh, you know, people looking for news and what's going on, there is uh, basically the announcement of three new products coming later this year. So I'm gonna jump over to uh, the website right here and you can see it says, who we are and what we do, D&D Studio blog. It says, welcome to the first of many design blogs, and I'll kind of skip through and, and we'll take a look, right? 2021 was an isolating year. The intent of this space is to give a visible and central voice to the people driving the development of the D&D game. You can expect official, high level, and somewhat frequent posts to live here. While we're still deciding on an exact cadence, the team is excited to talk more frequently and open about all the incredible projects we've got in the works. We won't spoil too much. After all, a little surprise is good. Well, well, well. Anyway, so Ray Winninger is uh, kind of the head of Dungeons and Dragons at this point. Uh, he says, we'll probably post an update every six weeks or so, but don't hold us to it. Um, our executive producer of D&D. &D. I've been in the role for two years. I'm no stranger to D&D, &D, blah, blah, blah. What does the D&D &D studio do? Uh, they're responsible for RPG products, the box sets, books, dice sets, accessories, um, consumer products. They mentioned the socks, probably things like this D20 light and other things like that. Um, and they can elaborate with different companies. They talk about Dark Alliance uh, and give you a sneak peek of what's coming with the D&D Twitch. Who is part of the studio? Um, and they kind of list off some of the folks there. Who decides what D&D products to produce? In a way, we all do once per quarter. We have a leadership meeting. Um, but here's what we're after, right? What does 2021 have in store for Dungeons & Dragons? Candlekeep Mysteries was conceptualized and led by Chris Perkins, an outgrowth of his work with Descent into Avernus. Chris was developing a chapter of Avernus that sends the adventurers to Candlekeep, and then it developed into Candlekeep. Van Richten's Guide is set to come out on May 18th. Later this year... Important stuff. Chris will return with our big summer adventure. James Wyatt will deliver a substantially improved version of a concept that I initiated myself. And Amanda Hammond will close us out with a project that was jointly conceived by herself and several other studio members. As usual, Jeremy Crawford is working with all of our leads overseeing mechanical content and rules development. In addition, to these five major products, meaning Candle, Keep, Van Richten's, and those three, look for a couple of additional surprises we'll unveil in the months ahead. We will get to speculation in just a sec. Now here's an important thing for a lot of you out there and myself, how long does it take to create a product? Because it says 12 to 14 months. And that's important to know because when we're talking about like when we see an unearthed arcana, this explains to us whether or not like what kind of time frame we can expect, uh, which is why when we saw like the gothic lineages show up and then Van Richten's was announced the next month, uh, it kind of made sense like, okay, they're just throwing this out there as an FYI. This stuff's been in development for a while. Uh, but it says 12 to 14 months, Candlekeep Mysteries went into full production in January of 2020 and released 14 months later in March 2021. Van Richten's Guide went into full production in March 2020 and releases in May 2021. This was another question I thought was interesting. How much input does Hasbro have into the D&D lineup? And it says, none. WotC is fully autonomous. We work with Hasbro on administrative mat uh, matters, and Hasbro greenlights any particularly large investments we make, like acquiring another company or developing a AAA video game, aka Dark Alliance, 
but we otherwise own our own product roadmaps and make all the relevant development development decisions. We do occasionally collaborate with Hasbro on special products like D Dungeons and Dragons Adventure Begins or the Drizzt and Guenevar action figures, which are actually sitting right there in my background. Uh, I have feedback or studio questions. How can I contact the studio? They give us some ways to do that. Um, I want to submit a pitch for a D&D product. Who do I contact? We don't normally accept pitches from outside of Watsi. You can read more about the policy here, but chances are it won't reach the studio, which is sad because, you know, we learn in, in interviews and things that that's kind of how Chris Perkins got to start in D&D was pitching Dungeon Magazine to write adventures. And we obviously know we don't have anything like that anymore. I'm a game designer. Can I freelance? And there's a little bit here about the DMs Guild and things like that. And then anything else we should know? Uh, those of us working in the studio are fans ourselves, and it's more than gratifying to share our love. Uh, enjoy Van Richten's, and we'll talk soon about what's coming in the months ahead. So, what do we think? So we said, Chris will return with our big summer adventure. James Wyatt will deliver a substantially improved version of a concept that I initiated myself. And Amanda Hammond will close us out with a project that is jointly conceived by herself and several other studio members. Okay, so... That's tricky, all right? So we know that three classic campaign settings were, are going to be released this year. Van Richten's is one, that's the Ravenloft campaign setting. That leaves two other classic campaign settings. I'm still convinced that Dragonlance is one of those. I'm gonna think that that might be the one that James Wyatt will deliver a substantially improved version of a concept that I initiated myself. This is Ray Winninger talking. I think that's going to be Dragonlance. I think Chris's big summer adventure, I'm still sticking to my guns that it's Feywild. With all the stuff we saw with Neverwinter, the little hints and drops and the Fey, um, the Fey race on Arthur Arcana, that makes me think that that's going to be, the adventure will be Feywild based. The, uh, the one will be, uh, Let's see, the classic campaign setting, that'll be Dragonlance. The James Wyatt will deliver an improved version. But then this last one, Amanda Hammond will close us out with a project that was jointly conceived by herself and several other studio members. I don't know. That technically, if I'm right and what and the adventure, I don't think the adventure will be the classic campaign setting. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But I think that that is going to be the adventure itself this big summer adventure will be just that an adventure it will not be uh any classic campaign setting this campaign settings will be these other two so i'm saying feywild adventure then i'm gonna say dragonlance is this one and then the third one i i honestly don't know i don't think it's gonna be greyhawk i just just in my heart, I don't think it's going to be Greyhawk. Uh, I don't think it's going to be... People are saying Forgotten Realms. People are clamoring for that because of the D&D Magic the Gathering crossover. Where, for if you don't know, Magic the Gathering is releasing a set, uh, a new set of Magic cards that is themed on the Forgotten Realms. Now, that would be an interesting tie-in, and it could work well to get the cross-promotion. But I feel like the Sword Coast Adventure Guide was supposed to be the campaign guide. We obviously know Wizards of the Coast has developed a new process for how they do campaign guides, right? It is lore of the area, it is new races, two new classes, and then an adventure, which is what we saw in all of the Magic the Gathering ones. It's what we see in Van Richten's, right? New custom Gothic lineages, two new subclasses, an adventure, and lore, and then there'll be some magic items and monsters. I assume that the uh, whenever the Dragonlance book drops, which I am still convinced is this year, we will get lore about Dragonlance and the whole world of Kryn. We'll get a handful of new races, probably these draconic ones that we just got. Probably tack on draconians as well, because that's a thing. Uh, two new subclasses, which I'm going to say is the Drake Warden Ranger and the Ascended Dragon Monk. Then we'll have an adventure, levels 1 to 4, and we'll have new magic items... And then we'll have new monsters. But this last one, it says it's jointly conceived by her and other studio members. The only, like, I have no basis for this, but my gut is saying Spelljammer or Planescape. 
And the only reason I say that is because it says it was jointly conceived by herself and other studio members. Now, that also makes it sound like it's completely original, but I don't think it is because we know that we're getting another classic campaign setting. So I feel like both Spelljammer and Planescape have the opportunity to be developed by multiple people because of just the crazy, like you have all the planes and you have all of the space. So I feel like that could work. Uh, plus, it's Spelljammer has become such a meme at this point, but it also is like the main, like that kind of concept in space travel and things like that, or even you could argue Planescape 2, were kind of like the heavy themes behind what we've seen in Baldur's Gate, and I can't, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, rather, and I can't imagine that that's completely just because they wanted to do mind flares and they wanted to do like nautiloids and stuff like that. I have to imagine that since Baldur's Gate was set to be full production release, I think one year after early access, which should be like August or so, October maybe, I forget what it is, of this year, that could line up and that would be a great co-marketing plan. Hey, we're releasing Spelljammer. Also, check out Baldur's Gate 3 in full production form. But then there was that last book. In addition to these five products, look for a couple of additional surprises will unveil in the months ahead. I'm hope I'm going to assume that's more like lifestyle products, right? We know they had that new license with Wiz, uh, with WizKids to produce other things. I'm thinking it's going to be more stuff like these these like I have Twinkle and Icing Death right here. I think we might see more props. That's going to be my guess. Uh, I could be wrong again, but I think props, I think action figures or uh, you know, we might get more news on the movie or maybe a TV show. That could be something that they'll unveil. That's a surprise. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I, 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 that's what I'm going to, I'll summate, I'll summarize right now. We got Candlekeep Mysteries. We know Van Richten's is coming. I'm calling Feywild Adventure with probably new races in it with some lore about the Feywild. Maybe new classes, but I don't think so. I think just those new Feywild races. I think Dragonlance with two new subclasses and Draconic races, probably the ones from the UA and Draconians on top of that. Also, hopefully, Gem Dragons, or at least one Gem Dragon of some kind to at least keep us going. Now, also, ooh, something... Well, no, it has to be, right? It's three classic campaign settings. Because something that a lot of you have brought up in my comments is... What if we're going to get a 5e Draconomicon, right? A dragon source book. And I love that concept because I love that it would open up that as a thing where we'll get like specific creature type and monster books like Libris Mortis, a book on undead, Lords of Madness, a book on aberrations, Draconomicon, a book on dragons. I would love that. That would be amazing. But the fact that they said there should still be two classic campaign settings, then again, we did hear about an anthology series that was supposed to have Kate Welch and Marisha Ray and Deborah Ann Wall, and we thought that that was going to be Candlekeep Mysteries, and it wasn't. So I guess when we hear these things through the grapevine, we can't necessarily take them with 100% truth. But Ray Winninger was the one who said we were going to get three classic campaign settings in 2021. And he's the one who also went to say that list of those things we're going to get coming forward. So while it could be a Draconomicon with a full list of gem dragons, which would be awesome, it could also just be we're going to include them in Dragonlance and just use that as an opportunity to put these creatures in the game. Uh, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I will see you all next time.